Hey there, Sam. In the web app, it would be nice if we can carry out certain operations after an operation has been completed. For example, when a new user has registered for an account, we might want to send a new user a welcome email. To implement this, it is tempting to put the logic inside the store method of our user controller right after we created a user. While this might work, it is far from ideal because we might end up flooding our controller's method with a hundred lines of code to implement the mailing logic. So what can we do then? At this point, we can either create a service class where we put all the mailing logic in it and call the service class method in our controller. Or we can choose another way, which is to use the event and event listeners. Here's how it works. When a task in our app is completed, we can get it to fire an event. For example, an event called user created. This event will then be broadcasted throughout the whole app. And if we have defined an event listener for this particular event, then the code within the listener will be triggered and carry out its responsibility. For example, sending out a welcome email to the user. An event listener is just a function that listens to a particular event. All right, let's take a look at an example and we'll see how we can implement events and event listeners for our app. Let's go to our user repository. In our repository, we have three methods, the create method, update method, and delete method. What we're gonna do now is to create an event for each of these methods. So to create an event, we can use PHP Addison to do that. We'll go to our terminal and type in PHP Addison make event, followed by the event name. I'll call it user created. And now you'll notice that Laravel has created a new folder called events in our app folder. And there's our event class created in it. Let's take a look at our class and you'll notice that there's quite a few things going on here. First of all, by default, the event class is using a few traits out of the box. Events in Laravel are meant to work with queues and web sockets. And these traits provides the corresponding functionalities for the event class to work with queues and web sockets. We'll discuss more about queues and web sockets later in this course. You don't need to worry about them too much for now. The next thing to take note here is the constructor. Typically, when we create a new event, we'll pass along our model, which in our case here will be user. So I'll just make the class to accept a user model and set a user model as a class property. The last item here is the broadcast on method. This is related to WebSocket and we don't need to worry about it for now. Just a quick explanation, this method will tell Laravel to publish this event on a specified WebSocket channel. And by default, as we see here, Laravel will publish this event on a private channel called channel name. Okay, now we have created our event class. Let's learn to fire this event in our app. Let's go to the user repository. We want to dispatch our event right after our user is created. To do that, we can simply call the event helper function and pass in a new instance of our event class, where we'll pass in our newly created user inside the constructor. And that's it. Now let's also create an event listener for our user created event. We'll go to our terminal and run a PHP Addison make listener command. We want to send an email, so I'll name our listener send welcome email. Hit enter, and now back to our app folder, you'll see that there's a new folder called listener being created, and our listener class is in there. Let's take a look inside our listener class. It is a simple class with only one method, the handle method. The handle method is where we define the logic on what we want Laravel to do when the event is dispatched. In our case here, we do want to send a welcome email to the user. So in the handle method, I'll simply dump a string to say email sent. And now just for demonstration, we'll go to the index method of the user controller and dispatch a user created event there. Because I don't really want to create a new user, just to test our event listener. Again, we'll call the event helper function and create a new instance of our user created event and pass in a dummy user model by using our model factory. Okay, now we've created our event. Let's link our event to our listener. To do that, we need to go to our event service provider. And in the listen property, we need to provide a mapping of our event class to its event listener. Once that's done, let's test our code. We'll go to Postman and send a request to the index method of our user controller. And as you can see in the response, we see our string dump from our event listener. That means our listener is running perfectly. Great. And now we still need to create two other events for our user model, the user updated event and the user deleted event. 
We also need to think about the other models as well. If we put all of our model events in one single folder, it will be very hard to maintain in the long run. So it is a good idea to separate our model events into their respective folder. So I'll create a new folder called models in our event directory and go ahead and create another folder called users in it. And drop our user created event into our user folder and refactor the namespace. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and create the updated event and deleted event for our user. And dispatch the event in the corresponding repository methods. Okay, now we're done. We might want to also create an event listener for each event and link them inside the listen property of our event service provider. Sooner or later, this array will become very big and very hard to maintain. So what can we do then? Laravel has a solution for us to better organize our event and listeners mapping. It is something called the subscriber. Let's learn to create a subscriber for our user event. Unfortunately, Addison does not have any make subscriber command, so we need to create a class from scratch. I'll go ahead and create a new folder called subscribers in our app folder and create the model directory in it. And finally, our user subscriber class. Now within the subscriber class, we need to define a subscribe method. This is where we define the mapping between our user event and their listeners. The subscribe method accepts an instance of the dispatcher. So we can type in it for better IDE support. And now inside the function body, we can simply call a listen method from our dispatcher to map our event to our event listeners. The first argument is the class name of our event. And the second argument is the class name of our event listener. And now to register our subscriber, we need to go back to the event service provider and put it inside the subscribe property. And now just for demonstration, I'll comment out our mapping in our listen property and go back to our user controller, refactor our namespace import, and go back to Postman, send a request again, and we still see our string dump. Using subscribers only makes sense if we've got a lot of events. For small application, using just a listen property will be enough. We still need to create the events for our post model and our comments model. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Again, the solution will be provided in the project repository. In the next video, we'll learn about how to actually send an email to the user inside the event listener. I'll see you there. Key takeaway for this lesson, event listeners are classes or functions that gets executed when an event is dispatched. We define our event to event listeners mapping in the event service provider. Event subscriber is a class that allows us to group our event to event listeners mapping in one place. We register our subscribers in a subscribe property from the event service provider. That's it for this lesson and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.